Okay, all right, welcome back to the show where we continue to survive in the Los Angeles area, <laughs> despite the constant threat of earthquakes. Oh my god. Constant okay. threat of earthquakes, which is to be taken just as seriously as the constant actual inability to go outside of your house in cold weather, as much of the country experiences, or just as seriously as the multiple hurricanes that happen every single year. Oh, Jesus. You know what? Or the multiple I tornadoes that, that happen every single prayer. year. And now you're just railing on me on the internet because I chose to share with you. Not cool. I'm worried more about fires than I am about earthquakes. That's actually pretty legit because we just had a giant fire over here. Is it contained yet? I'm not sure. Okay. Yeah, we. I mean, it's like an annual brush fire that we have yeah. in, in Southern California, so... <clears throat> Anyways, uh, some people did point out that there is going to be the uh, 6th Topanga Charity Cup taking place this weekend. Oh, cool. Uh, at, on August 6th at 10 a.m. in Japan. And it's like teams. Yo, you got to put some of those up on the it's internet. It's a team. Oh, oh, I like see what you're saying. The, yeah, yeah, like, okay, those teams okay, are okay, crazy. Okay, okay. Hang on. Oh, let's check it out. Hang on. Let me get this over here set up. Boom. Like this. Cause Bam. Bam. Got it. Bam. There we go. Okay, 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 okay. So what we have here, um, look at these teams. Those teams are super stacked. 178 plus teams so far, right? Yes. So we got Mago, Wow, Yaichi, Mochi, Sabahani, and Iki on one team. Daigo, Saku, Aru, Jobin, and Santaru on another team. Momochi, Choco, Haku, Yamaguchi, Johnny on another team, Tokido, Yo. Nemo, Kuroda, Snake Eyes, and Hamako? Yo, Snake Eyes is pairing with Kuroda. Uh, live vicariously, please. Through Jeez. Snake Eyes. Dude, and wow. Hameko, the ridiculous... Yeah, uh, tech monster. Tech monster. Uh, and and, and uh, which magazine does he write for? He writes for Ford Gamer. Oh, right? uh, yeah, so, yeah. yeah. Dude, wow. a lot of these teams are absurd. By the way, look Bachan, at number six. Oh, I was about to say seven. Okay, okay. six is Kurahashi, Kurahashi Muteki, Guile, oh. Ando, and Sasori. Is this team Super Turbo in SF5? I know, right? Dude, dude, team number nine. Look at seven. Yeah. Wait, hang on. Look at Over. seven. What? Bonchan, Fudo, Haitani, Nyanshi, and Mise. Yeah, and wow. then nine is Sian, Eita, Dogura, Goichi. That, this is... Vanau, Kokujin, that's wild. Yo, that's 14. Team Third Strike. Look at 14. 14 is KSK, Kazunoko, Ren, Soji, and Itazan. Where's Infiltration at, dude? I mean, he's obviously there. Maybe Control F Infil. Maybe know. he didn't. Maybe he didn't show up. Maybe he didn't stick around long enough for that. So I don't see his name anywhere. Just Control so. F for. Okay. Oh, okay. Nope. 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 No infiltration. So there you go. Dang, dude, that's so sick. There's like the ST team. There's the Third Strike yeah, team. I know, there's right? like Machibo's in there. Like, are those other folks Guilty Gear players? Oh, let me see. Uh, Machibo, Akira, Kami. I'm not sure actually. I okay. don't know those guys. So there you go. Wow, this is really interesting. I. Uh... Raiketsu, Inoue, Itsuki. Yo, Mester, Rao. Dude, there's a lot of old school guys there are here too. Old school dudes in here. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Okay, cool. Dude, it's, it's Tekken players in there, dude. That is crazy. Well, that's well, taking place this weekend. Um, yeah, thanks for the heads up. Apparently, it's going to be on twitch.tv slash Topanga TV. I'm so in there. there. You go. Yeah. Definitely. I'm pretty sure I'll be around this weekend. That is going to be one to watch. Yeah, for sure. Shout outs to, uh, to you know, uh, the uh, who is this? Uh, Kakuge7 on R Kappa for that information. Yeah, for sure. So, good stuff. Very there. interesting. Okay. That's. Uh, Wait, what was the stream? The stream? Twitch.tv slash Topanga TV. Cool. So it will be on Twitch, so we'll be able to watch it. So definitely want to watch that. So Very cool. That is going to be crazy. Yeah, oh, my be, God. <laughs> that's going to be ridiculous. Uh, but uh, let's let's talk a little bit about some just general news. Uh, as you can see, I've highlighted uh, games, community, and miscellaneous all at the same time. We've got a couple of cool things going on. Uh, first of all... Uh, the stats came out and it said that there was almost 2 million unique viewers for EVO on ESPN2. Almost 2 million unique viewers on there and they lasted an average of 20 minutes. Wow. So that's really impressive. Uh, and, uh, is that high? Is 20 minutes high? I don't know. Uh, I mean, for a three hour show, probably not super high considering a lot of people probably watch all three hours of it. But still, almost 2 million unique viewers, and someone put up a statistic. Uh, they tweeted it to Mr. Wizard, 
and I, I saw that it, I think it was the third highest esports event on TV, like of all time or something like that. Wow, so, okay, all in, right. In terms of uh, viewerships on, on national TV kind of thing. So. That's really nice. So there you go, super, super cool stuff, so. Um, also, uh, this is, I mean, I would have liked to have asked Sejam for more information on this one, but he's not around, but Combo Clash is going to show up in England with VS Fighting, and they're going to be a Killer Instinct World Qualifier, so we have a oh. Europe uh, Killer Instinct World Qualifier showing up. Um, also, another thing, too, I, I have this, so obviously there's been a lot of combo videos recently from Tekken 7 of Akuma just basically killing everybody. Yep. Right. Oh, yeah. Actually, uh, a bunch of uh, Sejam, even though he's not here, he uh, he played a bunch of Tekken 7 with mm. Akuma and actually beat Rip a match. It was kind of funny because it was just funny. And then, uh, yeah, I know, right? And then on top of that, uh, Gutex actually entered the Tekken tournament oh, okay. with the world because it's free to enter. And top eight pays out. And he said he got, he went two and two. There so, you go. To that genius, is genius that they're, but now here's the interesting thing though. I saw a tweet from Markman saying that the devs are paying attention and he was showing some video of, I guess, um, adjustments that were taking away some of Akuma's combos. Yeah, yeah it, was I, a, it was a few things they changed. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I saw like, there's a couple of combos he's been able to do where he does like multiple demon flips and I, now I saw the second one where you can escape it from it with the roll. And so apparently they're trying to yeah. work Akuma a little bit. So uh, he might not be that strong, but still, it's still genius that it lets Street Fighter players come in and learn Tekken. I think that's that, I think that's great. Agreed. Yeah. Trust me, it's a lot of guys. We did like one of the boot camps for uh, Wizard World, and it was a guy who only played Street Fighter. He's like, I don't play other fighting games. I only play Street Fighter. And he's like, I played Ryu, and I tried to play Akuma, and I'm waiting for him to come out in four. And then he played in the he played in the boot camp and he was like man this is really cool like i'm definitely gonna buy this game now it's actually <laughs> nice that's good that's good that's good yeah i'm really happy to hear that oh uh, what do you got there David? yeah um i was sent a little bit of info by uh, wasminator about the Ozhado nationals which mm -hmm. are going to be this is of course in australia this is in sydney australia uh 26 through 28th of august oh, okay so it's not this weekend but it's, it's coming not this up. weekend coming. but coming okay. up soon so if you are you know, somewhere in Eastern Australia, or you can get there easily, then, uh, you know, check it out or make some plans. That's Ozhado Nationals. Let's see if there's... It's cool. I mean, Ozhado's been around for a while, dude. They've been running yeah. events in Australia for a long time. This so. is Ozhado 14. Mm -hmm. And it'll be uh, an official ranking event for, the, for CPT, so that'll be on... That means it's on twitch.tv slash Capcom Fighters. Is that right? Uh, I, if it's a Cap premiere event, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, oh, if it's, it's ranking, ranking no, it, ranking can be anybody. I see. Okay. Yeah. Well, I don't see the stream info, but if okay. you have that in the chat, Wasminator, please let me know and I will say so. Or if that uh, info comes out next week, we can talk about it then. Okay. Thank you. Daigo will be there as well. Uh, they cool. said it's going to be twitch.tv slash Ozhado. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, so just O-Z-H-A-D-O-U. Very cool. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so hang on one second. <laughs> okay, um, also they just showed a video of Team China, Team Psycho Soldier from KOF 14 with uh, Athena, uh, uh, Kenso, and Chin. And um, I mean, they look like what you would expect them to look like really? so far okay. so yeah uh, so uh, but uh, I've always liked Kenso because you know I always had to use the Chinese guy right so um, it's just the way I always am that's why what I wanna, a privilege James that's why what I want to play Mei in Overwatch right just because she speaks Chinese and it just it makes me happy to hear Mandarin like in the middle of the game like I've that, never so. had Hasid to pick of my own yeah I know right Oh. Aww. Enjoy your privilege. <laughs> <laughs> um, but they also did some uh, King of Fighters demo analysis with like frame rate and input lag and such. And uh, Mike Z uh, even went in and like did a bunch of research. And oh. what he had actually found was that uh, at 1080p it performed slightly better than 720p, which makes sense because there's like downscaling or whatever like that. Okay. But in general, it was about 5.5 .5 frame, frames of lag, which is equal to what Ultra Street Fighter 4 was. Uh, what, that we're all used to. So Street Fighter Five is at eight frames, 
and uh, four, and I guess now KOF are about at five point five. So interesting. Um, okay. Seems to be uh, working pretty good there. Um, also, um, really interesting story here. Here, let me bust out the link for this. I'm gonna I'm gonna switch over here. Um, some arcade collect some arcade f uh, collector found this game called Kenju. Okay. Like it's just like this game that was developed for. Um, what was the system? It's the system is for oh yeah, yeah Thomas Wade the, yeah the SNK game right yeah there's some S it SNK was game SNK even? yeah that never came out it was like canceled and so like they were given uh, access to it no one's huh. sure why it's, it's been beautiful it's a really yeah, pretty game yeah so I mean I can play like some of these videos here you know let me check this out it's like a 3D game from that's really funny look at this so this is one of those games that never actually made it out and uh on the Thomas Wave uh, engine here. So, look at this. <laughs> huh. That looked kind of cool. What, what year is this from? Uh, this has had to have been a long time ago. This had to have been a long, long time ago. Yeah. I think it's around the time of the rival schools, actually. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, so there you go. It's just always cool to find these kind of things. You know what I mean? I, don't, I, like, I just bring it up because it's just, to me, it's like super interesting. Yeah. But if you want to check out the videos and read more about it, you can find it on uh, SRK over there. So, um, cool. Uh, also, just for some, um, oh, yeah, some community information. So uh, you and I, as well as D1 and a bunch of other people, managed to go to Kuwait. Oh yeah. Earlier in the year, and uh, that group, the the Fikra Gaming, uh, filmed a lot of us, asked us questions, did a lot of interviews, so they could put together a documentary. That documentary has been released, so you can oh, actually cool. go and view that now. Uh, you can check that out and see what uh, the players have to say about it. Cien was one of the people there. Ryan Hart was one of the people there. Yeah, Gutex. You, yeah, Gutex was there, so you can see all the people talk about that. Um, it is on SRK. You can find it there if you just look up Bikes Kuwait Battle Royale. Royale. But you can also find it on uh, YouTube, uh, you, on the Fikra KW channel on uh, YouTube. F-I-K-R-A-K-W. Yeah, let me see if you can actually just go straight there from like user slash Fikra KW. And indeed you can. My so, experience in Kuwait Battle Royale 2016. With that's D1. Thanks, D1. Yeah, thanks, D1. So it's YouTube.com slash user slash Fikra KW. K W K W K W. I've always pronounced it that way. K W. I don't know why. Double do. Yeah, double do. But uh, yeah, definitely check that out. Um, I have not had a chance to watch it yet. Yeah. But I will definitely take some time to sit down and watch that. So uh, that was an interesting, super interesting week, of mm -hmm. course. Mm -hmm. uh, but that was uh, an interview that they did with us on the last day we were there, it was just before we left. Mm -hmm. And, um, or just before I left, I think. All of left. us, all of us, yeah. Because as we all wandered out for our airplanes, he did that in the order of whose flight was That's coming true. up. Yeah. yeah, so I was actually the last you one because one. I had the last flight. Right, so. so that was an interview done in Yusuf's house. Yusuf, the guy who, who runs mm -hmm, Fikra. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was great that he, he like invited us into his family's home and um, you know, we had a whole conversation about he. Dude, we had at least two feasts at his house. Yeah, too. we did. But like this, this conversation was, you know, what you like about Kuwait, what mm. didn't you like about Kuwait, which I thought was a very fair question to be asked. Mm. Uh, and I was honest about, and um, you know, talked about the scene there. A lot of really interesting things. I I haven't yet seen what everybody else said, but uh, I thought that it, they asked really interesting questions. Yeah, so I was, yeah. I was happy to do that. Interview. And, and Yusuf made it explicitly told us he's like, don't just because we're interviewing you, don't like feel like you're yeah. obligated to say nice things. Yeah. You know, like speak from the heart, like tell exactly what you're thinking and such. Like it was that. really so, cool. Check um, it out. Uh, but a couple of extra uh, community things. Uh, Zero, a Smash Four player, has the Zero to Hero series, and he always puts out new content for oh, learning yeah. how to play Smash Four. So he has new one for training tips for Smash Brothers Wii U. Check that out as well. You can find that on SRK. SRK. A couple of um, signings recently. Um, Samus Main in Melee, Duck has joined the Melee on Me team. May the Myom team may lay it on the team. And uh, of course, uh, Stupendous was recently just signed to yep. Dark Siding. Uh, I think we did talk about Chris Deterian joining EVB already, right? So, yeah, so uh, another player, and I, I love how Vi is like, 
yo, SoCal Wednesday Night Fights is like a is like a interview spot for like uh, people to be sponsored. Yeah, <laughs> it's a breeding ground, man. Yeah. Anybody who's anybody getting sponsored now. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you're looking for people to sponsor, you might want to go to Wednesday Night Fights. <laughs> Look, I'm just gonna say this, right? In March, I did say sponsor Li Joe. Over the weekend, I said you should be sponsoring XS- XSK Samurai. Because mm-hmm. that guy's super good. He needs to go places. I would really like it if he could travel more. Yeah, yeah. he's one of the most talented players. In my view, yeah. one of the most talented players in the country because he does such good work with a scene that is pretty small. Mm-hmm. Pretty I mean, small. he has to travel to NorCal all the time to play. Which is hours. Yeah, so he has to drive at least, like, it's like like maybe two and a half hours or something like that just to even get there. So, mm. uh, But XSK Samurai is awesome. But, again, don't want to take anything anyway. away. It's awesome that Stupendous got For sponsored. Sure. Uh, hope Team Dark... I mean, look, I know that uh, Chris T is being treated super well by EVB. I even talked to some of them at Evo. Okay. And, you know, I mean, they, I didn't even say anything. They came up to me and they were like, we are not going to be one of those sponsors. Yeah, we're going to yeah, take yeah. care of it. <laughs> He's going to be, you know. They said that to me too. Yeah, they just like, we're st- so, you know, and, and from what I've talked to Chris, Chris is like, they are taking care of him really well. So happy for him. Hopefully, you know, Stupendous Fine is the same from Team Dark Sided as well. So that's a team based in Australia, if I'm not mistaken. Ah. And so they're venturing forward into the Street Fighter community. Interesting. Okay. And then uh, last thing, just because it's a personal pet peeve of mine, so I'm super happy. Shout outs to Pop Culture Shock. Um, They are coming out with new figures. They showed some uh, figures from San Diego Comic Con here. You can see that they've got an Oni, a Chun Li, an M Bison Uh here. (laughs) And they've got an Alex, and they've got a Ryu. Look, I'm just happy because they're making figures for dudes. Like, please make a Johnny Guilty Gear figure. Like, please. Like, if you just do oh, that, like the I will. Characters. Yeah, the male character. I will throw money at the screen. Like, if you can just start doing that. Dude, like, Alex. Dude, I uh, would. Yeah, Alex is actually pretty nice. I Alex. think he looks janky as hell in SF5, but he looks yeah. cool there. Dude, I would have loved a Sodom. Like, when I used to play oh, alcohol all the God, time, I would have so loved nice. to have a Sodom figure. That I probably would have cool. gotten even, like, a guy figure or whatever, like that. They just don't exist. Like, I've actually literally looked on eBay, like, through the yeah. interwebs, everywhere. Like, half of these things don't ex- don't exist, right? So Yeah, I, I would get a cue. Yeah, yeah. see? That would that, that'd be sick to have, like, a cue. Shit, I would get a cue. <laughs> right? Uh, yeah. Uh-huh. Just so I can get some variety behind me here. I mean, <laughs> it's not too bad, it's actually, too bad right, right now, now thanks, yeah. to, thanks to the evil Ryu and the Oni back here. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> But uh, yeah, shout out to Pop Culture Shock. They make great stuff, but I will say this. Their stuff is very, very pricey. Ooh, actually, they have some more pictures Ooh. here. Uh, their stuff is very pricey. Dude, check out that bison. That bison's pretty that cool. That bison's man. really sick, It actually. comes with different <laughs> hands. Yo, you can change the hands and the face. He comes with different faces. Yeah. Look just below. Just, just oh, below. Oh, yeah, that. you're right. Oh, huh? there you go. Yo, you, you have like a Smile bison on. hand graveyard. Dude, that's cool. <laughs> actually, you know what would be really funny is if you put bison in a graveyard and you had some of those hands just coming out of the earth. Yeah. <laughs> that's probably really what I would do. Funny. That'd, that'd be pretty cool. That'd be yeah. pretty cool. I had some friends that did that in high school. Uh, they were in the email on my chemical romance, but good yeah. people nonetheless. Yeah. yeah, I probably wouldn't be able to get most of these, unfortunately. They did make that cami figure that I, I, I do really want very badly because that cami figure is really sick. But uh, these figures, very cool. So shout outs to Pop Culture Shock. They definitely do a lot of good work. Very expensive. They do have payment plans. Um, so, um, good work though. If that, if you, if you find value in that, then uh, get in there. <laughs> I think, it's, I think it's cool. I mean, if the, if my favorite characters were in such a situation. Right. Exactly. Right. You, yeah. I would do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like I, I would have been, I mean, I'm glad, obviously I'm a fan of Felicia and Cammy. So there's not going to be any shortage yeah. of Felicia or Cammy anywhere. Right? Is there, so. is there Zappa, Steve? There's no, I Zappa. Wish. there's no, yeah, Zappa that would be Steve. super sick. That would, I would cry. Like I would legit cry. Like, can you like, imagine, like, a Zappa, like, you know how there was just different hands and stuff for Bison? They just have the different summons? Right? Like, Rao and the dog. Oh, my God. Yo, the Rao would, would be super cool. Oh, yeah. my God, that would be amazing. Dude, that would be, that would be ridiculous. That, see, look, there's a market out there for this. Yeah. These people have to know. Yeah. You know? Oh, man. Man, that, that sounds was... really cool, dude. The yeah. huge Rao on him. That'd be awesome. Yeah. But uh, that's all I have here for uh, game news. Uh, just general news, uh, okay. games, community, miscellaneous. Okay. So, uh, anything else that you guys wanted to talk about? Well, like-
People are talking about some Smash stuff yes. in the chat. I was mostly out of social media over the weekend, and I'm not sure what they're talking about. So I will just say this. There was an article on SRK that got put up. It was an editorial okay. uh, where somebody basically kind of uh, insinuated that Smash 4 people need to stop complaining because they need to prove themselves first and all this other stuff. And it's like they had the second highest entrance at EVO, like... Where do they need to prove themselves, you know? In, like In order to do what? In order to get the pre the preferential treatment, like Top 8 Sunday oh. and, like, and all these other things. Like, a lot of people kind of agreed the article was not very good. Like, okay. And, like, it came out to universal pandering, okay. basically. Yeah, a lot Fair of people handing. were <laughs> mad at this. But then also, uh, so you heard what happened to Gimmer, right? Very, very unfortunate yes, situation. Yes, I did. That is terrible. Yeah, that was really Joe, terrible. Steve, did, did you hear about that? No, I didn't. Uh, he finally, for the first time in his life, after being super OCD, said, you know what, fine, this is too much work for one man, I'll hire somebody else to help me. <laughs> the guy accidentally clicked the checkbox of select all videos, and he renamed every video to the same title. Like 6,000 videos. No, yeah, like not even, okay, like, it was like, it was like, exactly yeah, it was like 20,000, or was it just like 6,000 videos? It was so, uh, so, many thousands of videos. So even if they can revert it, unfortunately, the way that YouTube's algorithm will work and everything like that, it doesn't restore that, you know, so. So if you want to search for his videos, it's not going to come up as frequently. And he said that his, some big chunk, I think he said 30% of their mm -hmm. viewership comes from the, that kind of looking for older videos thing. Mm -hmm. Which is now going to be tougher. Yep. So that's a crazy. That's, it's a really terrible situation. Crazy. And, uh, hopefully they can restore it. Other channels have had restorations before, and uh, hopefully he'll be able to get that kind of restored for him. But then he also got into a little bit of other uh, drama because he wrote a post on on Reddit, I believe it was, where basically he said that like. Ew. <laughs> Sorry, I was drinking water. Yeah, I, I, I know. Yeah, I know. I was, there was no mystery <laughs> Everybody there. could tell. Everybody <laughs> could Sorry, tell. Guys. Yeah. Um, but, uh, did they already fix the YouTube stuff? That oh, did they? Great, did so. they? Uh, now I'm in a loop. Okay. Oh, YouTube did fix it. Okay, okay. They fix it now. That's cool. That's cool. Uh, only 1,500 are still misnamed, but that's not bad at all. Well, okay. I'm glad to hear that. Shout out to YouTube. Shout out yeah. to YouTube. Okay. Uh, but the other thing <laughs> that uh, happened was that Gimmer put a tweet out and he kind of gave the implication that the FGC kind of owes Smash and that Smash is keeping the FGC alive and that like if it wasn't for Smash Melee and stuff like that, that the FGC might not be as big as it is right now. And, you know, there was a little bit of that kind of implication there to which a lot of people did get mad because they were like, Smash Melee is only around because Evo had that donation drive, and if Skullgirls had won that, who knows what would have happened, et cetera, et cetera, so. I don't know, I don't think we take too much credit for that. Right. I mean, it's, sure, it was at Evo, but it was because Melee did the work. Right. And even yeah, after yeah. that, like, that w that year, there must have been just a few hundred people at Evo. Yeah. It's not that big. And they did the documentary and everything like yeah, that. Yeah, there's so a lot of other reasons stuff. than so, just the Evo thing. The one thing I want to say is just that, like, look, if you're a leader in the community, like Kimmer, right, the only thing I'm going to say is there's just no reason to fan these kind of fuel right now because the tensions are high. And, like, you know, a lot of people are mad, and I'm, I'm pretty sure we can work it out. Now... Having said that, Gimmer just went through something very traumatic and very upsetting, so not hard to have that kind of a response come yeah. out in, in this kind of situation. So I also do not do not put that much blame on him. He was probably just very emotional at the time, as any of us would be if it felt like your entire like six-year career of YouTube videos just went up in smoke, right? So, you know, th there's definitely a precedent for him coming out and saying something like that. Look. I know I it's it's we're community leaders and stuff like that, right? So yeah, Steve. I, yeah, and so I'm always trying to promote, you know, um, you know, understanding each other, working with each other, and I know there's all this right. talk about melee, trying to or, or smash community just leaving Evo and all this other stuff like that. I mean, I, it's just I feel like there's so much to benefit from everybody working with each other, and there's a lot of people in the FGC proper that are like F smash get rid of them we don't need them and then they're smash like we don't need them and it's just like 
we can help each other. We can help each that's, other. That's definitely true. Yeah. I think the number of both of those has been dropping, though. I mean, there's so, certainly still holdouts that are being silly that smashes in fighting games. Right. right. Like there are still some of those, but there's way fewer as a percentage than there were. Oh yeah. yeah right. Right. Way yeah, fewer. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I, I, you know, I'm not super in, inside of the melee and Smash Four scenes, but uh, all the people I know personally are totally down with collaboration mm -hmm. between the larger FGC and them. So I don't know how many people that really is, but uh, look, I certainly get Smash Four being upset about Evo. Right? We talked about this during our Evo mm -hmm. recap. Um, they had a ton of players, and they get good viewership, mm -hmm. and they were not in that great of a position mm -hmm. when it comes to when the game, when the finals happen. You know, again, that part of that is because the game runs super long, mm -hmm. and it's, right. just, it's hard to fit in on a Sunday. But you know, certainly, like there, could, you could imagine a situation where Smash Four was the final game, or the yeah. second to last game, or the third to last game. Like it wouldn't be out of the question. It's just, uh, I mean, I get that they're that they're upset. Uh, I hope that Evo does things better with them in the future, but it's not just with them. I mean, there were a lot of issues right. this year that right, Evo, right. Evo has owned up to them, you know? Yeah, and, and I mean, with, like... With almost all the communities. Like, I, I, I've been on Test Your Might, and they're complaining about how Mortal Kombat was treated, and their complaints are almost exactly the same as the complaints that Street Fighter V people had and mm -hmm. that Guilty Gear people had. Everybody yeah. had very similar complaints. We need more chairs. Like the layout's not yeah, that great. Yeah, yeah. We need more of the big I mean, screens. Yeah, why, why couldn't we sleep more? Because you put us on at yeah. like eight in the morning for yeah, the Mortal Kombat exactly. players. Yeah, I, I feel like that all just goes to show that like we're all still learning and growing. Like, yeah. as, as a lot of people so quick to go up in arms about what they didn't like or how it didn't fit them, I feel like it's a lot easier to to look at take the the viewpoint and say, hey, we all still have stuff that we can work on because yeah. there's a lot of people that. James is right, that fuel that flame that, oh, it was done with malicious intent, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm like, no, that's not the case, it's just sometimes the, the logistics don't work out for yeah. everybody, and I feel like that's always going to be the case. I mean, people could be more vocal, the people in charge could be more vocal, but the point is, the fact that it's really, we're just now getting to the point where we're anything past grassroots in my personal opinion. <laughs> no, you're so, absolutely right. Uh -huh. So for somebody to get upset and be like, oh, it's because money and all this other stuff, I don't really think that plays as big a part as you think it does. Like, yeah. as a lot of people think it does, so. I think you're right. Yeah, and then another thing, too, is just that, I mean, just judging from all the stories from people, I mean, like, Filipino man, right? Like, he, he played from, like, 10 a.m. all the way to, like, freaking 11 p.m. on Saturday just because he got sent to losers in the first round and won the whole entire way through. But, like, everybody kind of had, like, less than optimal experiences. Yeah. And that's what's going to happen when you have nine uh, games like that. Now, obviously, you know, the Smash community, obviously all the communities have different personalities. Smash community definitely has a stronger sense of entitlement than a lot of other communities. That is definitely true. That is a definite, a valid criticism of them. I've said it years ago that, that they've been that way. But they have to realize that a lot of communities did get screwed over and they have to understand that it's a habit. It's no one community, like nobody on the EVO staff was like, you know what, screw these guys, we don't care about them. Let's just treat them badly. Because yeah, who cares? Of course. You know what I mean? They yeah. try to treat everyone equal. It was really hard. And uh, even someone did a calculation that in terms of number of stream, of amount of stream time, it was just like, it was Street Fighter Five, and then everybody else was pretty equal. Right, yeah. Uh, and so. and you, have to, you have to expect that Street Fighter Five is going to have that position. It had 5,000 players. It had two and a half times more than anybody else, or right. two times, whatever the number was. But, and it had, it has... Well, I don't know. Usually has the biggest viewership. I understand that Melee was right. different on Twitch this time. But that, that slot, that right before Street Fighter slot, is always the biggest right. one. So. And then plus another thing, too, I just want to reiterate, too. When the past previous years, when Street Fighter 4 wasn't streaming on, like, three streams at once, how mad did everybody get? What? This match was played on right. stream? You guys suck, Evo. You guys don't care about our game. Right. And so this year... That like, happened this year. People still said that yeah, this year. Yeah, uh-huh. And so it's happened also. So this year they're like, fine, we'll put Street Fighter on more streams because people want all these matches. Yeah. And now everyone's like, why is Street Fighter on so many streams? It's like... Uh, people were mad that, like... Phenom only got on stream once, oh, right? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, people yeah. are uh -huh. still mad about stuff. Hugo so. 101 only got on stream. The only times he got on stream is when he lost. 
Right, yeah. Even though he got ninth place, yeah. Right, so, so I don't know, it's, it's, uh, it's hard to make that kind of thing perfect. Yeah, so it, it's going to happen, and, and you know, I, I do hope that a lot of the, the Smash leaders, like Prague, like like uh, Scar, like Toph, like a lot of those guys can talk about it and really try to get people to understand that that's what's the situation. It really it does, it does take a lot of the leaders in the communities to be able to try to you know, represent that properly. And, and, and to run something like Evo is, is hard. No one's gonna, it's like, uh-huh. if you know that no one can come out completely satisfied, then you can come out satisfied. You know? Right. <laughs> Weird way to say it that no, way. I, I, I get know, it. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. That's all I have for that situation, so. And yeah, I feel like we could talk about stuff like that forever and ever. Like, I could rant about stuff like that forever and ever. Yeah. You could bring in 10 different people to our <laughs> community, and I'd still be able to talk about it. I mean, everybody for that matter. So right, right. I just feel like, once I, I just go back to my original point, we're all still growing. Mm-hmm, like, mm-hmm. it's not going to look 100% okay for everybody. It's not. But you have to remember, like, I mean, the way I see it is, you know, the route it could go, and this is this is super ambitious thinking but just how in each state you have to have a special like sports package to see everything every game that's played mm-hmm. by a certain team yeah who knows mm-hmm. that might be something that's possible i feel like it's a thousand times harder yeah, because you true. basically have virtually a thousand times more people <laughs> right you know, to go through but i mean i feel like there have been solutions that have come eventually yeah. to help the every complaint that's being voiced right now in other fields so who knows what can happen i'll say just work with you you know and even last year they they ran like seven or eight streams and that caused a problem and if you saw chris seglias ask me anything on reddit he specifically went out and was like please can we lower it to five otherwise because last year the streaming was kind of a disaster a lot of people were mad because things didn't get streamed and things were late and like things couldn't get started on time and steve is frying an egg or something like that so sorry that was me drinking the water again yeah so. no <laughs> but you know so we, we lowered it to five so that we could run a so that segway could run a better ship right? you mean number of streams yeah the number of streams and so now uh, and plus another thing is you you open it and now you're everyone sucking from the same bandwidth and everything like that. So you know, it's a lot of logistics that people don't really understand of how hard it is because as soon as you run more streams, that's just a whole nother gigantic setup. Yep. You know what I mean? You a whole nother group of people running another stream for every stream that you add. It's like we're Dude, basically running another tournament. How much money do you think they spent on internet? Dude, I at don't. At the Vegas Convention Center. Dude, I, I'll tell the story again, the same story. I still remember one time I was like talking to someone, they're like, Evil must be making billions of dollars. I'm like, are you kidding? Do you know how much things cost there? I'm like, how much do you think their internet costs for the weekend? And he was like, well, my internet's like 60 bucks a month, so probably like 60 bucks. What? Yeah, that's <laughs> literally what the guy said to me. He thought that the Evo internet cost 60 bucks for the weekend. This was like maybe four years ago or something like that. But even four years ago, to even say that, like to not even understand that this, the internet at the Las Vegas Convention Center, to be guaranteed to have that bandwidth probably costs like tens or $20,000, $50,000 or something like that. That would be wow. my guess, because I know mm-hmm. that at the Vegas hotels, it's like, t- it was, this I think was four or five years ago uh-huh. when I asked him about this, probably four years ago. Over ten thousand dollars. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. So at the Las Vegas convention. That was years ago. Yeah. So I I can't you know. Yeah. Much more now for sure. Exactly. So I mean, people don't know how expensive it is to run something like this, especially in a city like Vegas. And then of course people are like, why not just why don't move it somewhere else? I mean, like, dude, Vegas don't just Vegas is the right place to run it. So so. Uh, Apparently, Ponder had a response to some of the Smash stuff. Uh huh. Uh, people were questioning whether venue fees were part of why they made decisions about which game to play when, I guess. Uh-huh, but, uh-huh. you know, he's saying that they did not. That was not the reason. Okay. Okay. Well, the, the anyway, cool, that's about it. The cool thing about it is that they're talking with people. They're trying. Oh, those ones. Yeah. yeah. The pond- the, they don't have to do that, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Ponder and, and Inkblot will talk. Right. So, in any case, uh, yeah. So, I guess anything else besides Smash drama that anyone would like to hear about or I think uh, 
Why does it cost that much? Thing. Because they can make it cost that much. It's like a business, and yeah. the hotel knows that they can force you to pay exorbitant fees. Yeah, and also it's just it's not like home internet, right? Because like literally, if you are providing internet as a service to a company like that, and if it's not so beefy that it goes down in the middle of it, yeah. the companies can sue you oh, yeah. for that kind of thing. Which right? has happened. Right. So you have to guarantee that your hardware is like double, triple, quadruple, you know, Super like, robust. yeah, uh, make sure that if failover, like if this dies, this works, this dies, that works. Yeah. And so people don't know that this is this is the cost of things, of, of, of dealing with these kind of businesses, you know, and... Um, how, that's how that's that's what it's like being a TO. Talk to Jabali. I mean, he's found like all these new venues. He wrote about. I should probably we should probably talk about. It. He found like a new venue that will, will be in 2018, mm. but in 2017 it'll be at the Wyndham Resort one last year because uh, they couldn't get it in time. But okay. yeah, he was just like, he he's wondering if he can make it co justify the cost of getting that uh, convention center in Daytona, I believe it is, which is an hour away from Orlando. Yeah. But yeah. Okay. It's pretty crazy. So. Um, I'm a little bit disappointed with Demonology Warlock. I thought it would be more interesting than it is. Uh, I thought it would be more about micromanagement, but it seems, eh, which is it is a little bit, but is this a game? I it'd be or more something? so. I'm talking about World of Warcraft. Oh, okay, okay. So. I was like, oh, okay, nerd talk, nerd, yeah. nerd talk. Um, I mean, it's way it's way better than it was before, but I was kind of hoping that it would be a little bit different right, than it right. is. Anyway. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There was definitely news that SCR um, is going to be at the esports arena this year, and they're going from twenty games to only seven games. I know the Marvel and the KI community are kind of angry about it because those two games aren't there. But Fi said he's re looking into it, and they're going to try to figure out how to make it work. So, but uh, yeah. that's cool. Okay. That's a, yeah. Okay. Any random crap, Steve? No. I mean, I really wanted to talk. I felt like we should have spoke on Comic Con trailers and stuff last time but i say we save that for another time and right? we need yeah. sejam here as well exactly, to discuss that exactly. okay yeah, yeah. cuz i don't want to talk about all that stuff without him the cape <laughs> oh god it was so good. Good. you know what i'm yeah steve dude, knows what i'm doing without even god. seeing it. yeah uh huh dude the, the cape. cape the cape <sighs> okay uh, i haven't played overwatch since before evo hmm all right. Okay, cool. All right, hey, thanks for hanging out with us. We'll see you next Tuesday. Yeah, thanks for calling in, Steve, so. No problem. I'll see you guys next week for sure. Okay, on, man. cool. Peace out, everybody.